Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen and I'm from Ocean Chicks Films. Tonight we're going to do a brand new horror movie review of the film Smile from 2022. I missed you guys so much. I haven't done this in a while. Um, I've been getting settled into a new day job and so I'm pretty tired, but I, I'm just dying to get back at it. And I finally got to watch something relatively current, not right on the money current, but you know, I'm almost there. I'm, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Um, so I was super excited to be able to watch this movie and I want to talk about it with you guys. Smile from 2022. After witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient, Dr. Rose Cotter starts experiencing frightening occurrences that she can't explain. As an overwhelming terror begins taking over her life, Rose must confront her troubling past in order to survive and escape her horrifying new reality. Directed by Parker Finn, starring Susie Bacon, Caitlin Stacy, and Kyle Gallner. So I didn't know too much going into this film, except that I heard it was pretty good. Um, and of course, I, I knew that Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon's daughter was the lead in this film. And so I was really intrigued by that. What freaks me out is that she looks like they're still really young, <laughs> like me, you know. But I remember um, the first... Uh, movie I saw with Kevin Bacon was Footloose and that was way back in the day I went on my first date and we went to the movies and we went and saw Footloose together so needless to say I'm a huge Kevin Bacon fan so I was really excited about this and I have to say the film itself has a really strong feel of a stir of echoes it was giving me those vibes and so I feel like her dad has had a really big influence on her there's a lot of him and her and of course she just looks like Kira so much love her too um, I really enjoyed this film a lot I feel it was a real modernized version of that stir of echoes has kind of a romantic horror feel going on to it and you know what back in the day when that came out people thought that was a little little odd and strange too um so this movie has the same kind of feel to me but um of course modern much more modern and um yeah i loved it for that reason it's got kind of a weird quirkiness about it the only difference i feel between star of echoes and this one was that this one sort of is more ambiguous um you're not exactly sure i'm not going to give away spoilers in this this movie you'll have to watch it yourself but um it has sort of a open-ended you're not exactly sure what's happening you know whether there's a psychological thing going on or whether there is in fact some sort of demonic presence or that kind of thing you, you're left not knowing and you know me i love those kinds of films the ones that make you think and the ones that you want to watch over and over and i'd like to watch this one a couple more times another thing i loved about this film was the way that it was filmed the the lighting the set I felt like there were very strategically placed items and things happening in it to really play with your emotions. Like for example, did everyone else notice all of the paintings that were throughout the film? I'm dying to know. I didn't do a lot of trivia behind the scenes of the movie research for this film yet. Maybe I'll do that in a part two. But there were lots of these paintings and I was wondering who did these paintings? What does this represent? What is this all about? Because I know that there was something going on there because it really piqued my interest and um, just the way that they would set up scenes for the horror like for example I'm gonna do one little mild spoiler for one scene so there's a part where she is stressed and she's picking at her cuticle you've done that before right where you're thinking I'm gonna just pick at it and get rid of it so I don't have to walk all the way to the cupboard to go get the nail clippers to clip it off I'm gonna do it it's gonna be fine and rip Ah, blood everywhere. <laughs> she snagged the whole cuticle off and she kind of cringes in pain. Um, and right after that, we get a shot on the table of this really bold butcher knife, kitchen knife that she's got that's all kind of, um, you know, hammered metal, that kind of thing. Um, and so I felt like that really added to the tension of the film and it was a really interesting way to do it. And of course, the CGI, the transformations, the demonic voice. Um, and that smile, that classic smile that you see throughout, that you've seen in the posters or the trailer for this film, really add to the creepiness of it when you think about it. I didn't find it was too over the top and too unbelievable. It was, it was good. I, it, it, it creeped me out. I thought it was really good. And kind of in the same way that Stir of Echoes has that creepiness about it, right? You're thinking it's not 
absolutely 100% accurate realistic, but it's something that you can kind of get involved in and, and have fun with. And I thought it was a lot of fun. Sosie Bacon is our main character, Rose. And of course, she's a daughter of Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. Absolutely lovely gal. Oh my gosh, so talented. Such a great performance in this movie. I cannot wait to see her in more films. But she plays this therapist who's been through something traumatic in her childhood. And she starts to exhibit signs of a mental breakdown, we think. We're not sure though. We're left wondering if it is something supernatural. Um, all of her patients begin to have similar occurrences and things happening. So it weighs on her mind and it forces them to give her a leave of absence to you know, deal with it and take a rest and figure out what's going on. So you're not really sure throughout the film which way it goes. I love that about this movie. And there's so many creepy unsettling images in this film. I just loved it so much. I really want to watch more because I really feel like there's a lot of symbolism going on here. There's these paintings throughout in each of the rooms that you see that I'm wondering who did these paintings? Where did these paintings come from? What are they? You know, um, I didn't dig into the trivia uh, side of this film like I usually do. Maybe I'll do a part two later, but I just wanted to give you an overall feel that I got from the film just after watching it. Um, lots of symbolism though, I think, and I think that's what's really incredible about this. Now, are there a lot of jump scares? I guess there are, but to me, it brings that modern element of horror to the film, um, which is a very different thing from, say, back in the 70s, 80s, where movies were, I don't know, more about the, the storyline and not so much about these crazy slasher jump scare things. But I think in this case, it works in the film. I don't think it's a bad thing, actually. I think they were necessary and it builds the mood in the film. So I have to disagree with some critics, which I, you know, fair enough, right? My opinion. Um, but I think that it added to the film and it gives it a real charm. And I really enjoyed those parts. And they really put me in Rose's shoes. It really makes me feel she's really, really on edge. You know, when you're really overtired and overworked and overwhelmed and things aren't making sense and you're kind of seeing things that are kind of crazy and you're wondering what's going on and every little tiny thing is just making her flinch and freak out and jump. And I think that's necessary in this film because of everything that's happening. And I think that plays with the idea that is she going crazy or is there something really demonic and horrifying happening within this film? My only one criticism is that maybe it could have been a bit longer. There could have been more to it, but maybe there's going to be a part two because you know that's usually what they do, right? And I'd be interested in seeing a second one for sure. Um, exploring more about maybe her childhood and what she went through there and, and what's to come in the future, that kind of thing. I would see more. Um, that's the only criticism I have is I, I wanted more, but because of that, it makes me want to watch the movie again and really analyze and dissect it. So, you know, it's kind of a balance it, it, either way, but I, I'd watch a number two, absolutely. Another thing I might have tweaked a little bit is maybe added a bit more variety in the music. It's very good, it's very effective, it's very creepy, but they repeated some of it and I feel like maybe they could have played with that a little bit more, added more to it. Um, although, you know, that's being super nitpicky, I think. And I don't know about you guys, but that smile on everybody is so scary. I remember being little and, you know, grown up brothers and sisters would tease me by like staring at you and just smiling that way and freaking you out and not stopping. That yeah, that's stuff of nightmares, man. That's really, really creepy. Um, I thought that was really effective really fun. Okay, so guys, I am dying to know what you guys thought of this film. I really want to talk about it in the comment section below, so drop your comments below and I'll chat with you. You know I love doing that. So for my review, I'm going to give this four shark bites out of five. Highly recommend. Go watch it if you can. I watched it on Paramount Plus, actually. Um, I was very shocked to see that it was on there the other night, and I watched it and really, really liked it. So go watch it. So this was so much fun. I'm so glad to be back. Um, I'm going to crank out some more shorter movie reviews so that I can keep being on here more regularly with getting used to my day job now. And uh, yeah, drop your comments below. I really want to chat. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it does help me out a lot. And subscribe to the channel for more movie reviews like this, interviews, art, 
the whole, all of it. <laughs> I love you guys so much and we'll see you again next time. Bye guys.